Hey, I'm Adrian from collegeaudition.org, and I sat down with Ziva Barzell from Point Park University to talk a little bit about the Musical Theater BFA program. So if you're interested in auditioning there, you definitely have to check this out. I'm Ziva Barzell, and I am the head of musical theater at Point Park University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us, Siva. Um, so just sort of an overview. Can you talk about just an overview of Point Park and what you are hoping students get out of their four years there? Um, I get that question a lot. And so obviously uh, we want students that are ready to get work. So the training is really rigorous. Um, but we also want uh, students to have a taste for excellence and respect for their craft and to feel empowered with what they do. So I think um, that's sort of what we, uh, that's what we aim for. And um, our students do get work when they get out of here, which is fantastic. And, um, and hopefully this is a, a lifelong uh, goal to be an artist um, and to be part of uh, a team player, be an ensemble member. Um, so that's what I think we, we really try to achieve in those four years. Yeah. If a student's coming in as a freshman, musical theater major, mm -hmm. um, what does a typical day or a typical week look like for them? So it is a very rigorous program. So just mm -hmm. to get an idea is uh, there's 132 contact hours in the major and over 100 of them are in their major. Wow. So, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty intense, um, and I think that's a really good way for students, uh, because all programs aren't the same, right. and um, just like we're looking for a good fit for us, they're looking for a good fit for them. Totally. So I think uh, depending on what you want your four years to look like, so if you come to Point Park, you're going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning ballet every day, mm -hmm. uh, freshman year. Um, you have acting, voice and speech, piano, music theory, sight singing, private voice. Um, uh, you are assigned to crew each semester of freshman year. Um, you do script and score analysis. So it's a very packed, uh, a packed day. Um, I would say when you're on crew, you're going to be going from 8 in the morning till 11 at night. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty packed, but I find that most students that want that kind of rigor uh, already are doing those kind of hours in high school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of learning that balance. And although we're rigorous and we do push our students to be the best they can be, we're there to catch them and guide them when they, you know, burn out a little bit, which it tends to happen. Yeah, yeah, because that's those are long days. <laughs> They're long, long days, days but sure. most of them are pretty hungry for it, which is yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the balance? Um, so you said 132 credit hours and 100 of them are within the arts. Yeah, it's a little more than 100. A little more than Only 100. because it's uh, listed as 42 core credits, but six of those are theater history and three are the New York Showcase. Okay. So that's why it takes us over 100 in the major and then the rest are um, gen eds. So... Yeah, that is a that's a huge ratio. Like a typical program is 120 credit hours, so that's a lot more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, cool. So of the training that you provide, and this might be sort of hard to pinpoint, but do mm -hmm. you think that they get a complete balance between acting, singing, dancing, or does it sort of lean more one way or the other? Yeah, I we're pretty much known as a triple threat program, mm -hmm. so they are trained equally in dance singing, singing voice, um, and acting. Um, but what I say to the students is that they don't have to be a triple threat, yeah. but they're going to get triple threat training so that by the end of four years, they're the best they can be in all those areas. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. someone identifies more as a dancer, like, do they have mm -hmm. the opportunity to take more dance classes so that it does weigh yeah. a little bit more heavily? Yes, so yeah. if they are a dancer, dancer, uh, they can audition for the um, dance minor. 
Okay. And if they're accepted into the dance minor, they start taking classes with the dance majors. And we're very fortunate. Um, our dance program is, I think, one of the top three in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the MTs are taking their dance classes in the, in the dance program. But, yeah, so we do have um, a dance minor that they can do, which is also extremely rigorous. Mm -hmm. And we'll add a lot, of the, a lot more dance classes. Yeah. And you said it's auditioned. You can't just add the it minor. It is. Correct. Um, you can take more classes. So, for instance, we have a progression that's required. So, first year is ballet, second year is jazz and modern, but most students will continue to take supplemental ballet. So, you know, they, they can add or tap class. Or, so, you can add classes, mm -hmm. um, but in order to be in that, the, the um, dance pro, the, with the dance majors, you have to be minor. Gotcha. Is it the same, like, do you offer an acting minor that can be auditioned into? Um, they're taking a lot of acting classes already. Gotcha. So uh, they're actually probably taking more acting than, um, well, let's put it this way. They take acting with spoken text, which is contemporary through Shakespeare, mm -hmm. and they take acting through song uh, for six semesters as well. So they're getting double acting classes. Um most of the way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess that's a good sort of transition is like one of the most frequently asked questions that I get, especially from parents, is what programs allow you to double major? Like they need it. Right. Do you allow double majoring or I, firing I outside of the arts, I guess? I, I think it's impossible to double major. Yeah, it's hard. Um, when I say impossible, though, we did have a student that did it, but it would be extremely difficult. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of our students do a minor. So we have a, an applied music minor, which okay. is heavily piano based. We have the dance minor. A lot of students uh, take a business minor. Um, there are other minors they can take. It's just that those are the three that fit the best. Yeah. A business into minor. Structure smart. of all the classes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So a lot of them are carrying one of those minors, but to double major, I just don't know that you really have the time. Yeah. Um, because a lot of your semesters are at capacity. Yeah. Uh, with credits. Yep. So we do have an honors program, though. So okay. I always say that. Um, I think I keep saying, I always say, but I do say <laughs> um, that uh, there are students that come to us that don't ever want to take another academic in their life. Yep. And they can just do the minimum. Um, but we also have um, students that are very academically inclined. And so some come in on the honors program. We have an amazing person who runs our honors program. And uh, so if they are academically inclined, they can add on academics as well. Yeah, that's good to know because that's I have students who want to go into a very arts based program, a conservatory based program or, you know, a, a BFA mm -hmm. that's structured heavily in getting more arts credits than gen eds, but they don't really want to let that academic side go. Right. And, so yeah. and, and I would say all, I mean, most of our students coming in have pretty good GPAs. Yeah. It's just some have more, um, some want to take more dance classes and some want to take more academics. Yeah. So yeah. it gives them a choice. It gives them a choice. Mm -hmm. Right on. Do you allow your students to audition into your uh, shows right away or at what point in their training do they get to start to be on stage? So first semester, no auditioning for the freshmen. We just want them to get used to being in the program, away at school. Yeah. Um, second semester, we, we have a cinema program. They're allowed to do student-directed films. They're allowed to audition for the student-directed one acts, which are part of the season. Uh, we do an AIDS benefit every year that they can audition for. And we do a freshman showcase at the end of uh, the spring semester so they can do all of that and then they're in the casting pool for the rest of the time cool and so in the summers do they typically work i mean pittsburgh is such a great town for the arts anyway do you have connections with the yeah. local theaters or do you students do summer stock in the summer typically yeah i would say i mean this summer obviously is a little different yeah, yeah. um but last year we had about 50 of our students working professionally okay um some of them were um at theaters nearby a, a number of them got their card yeah. Um, and then a lot of them work all over the country, you know, just doing summer work, but we don't push them. Um, some students need to make money over the summer. Some students need to go home over the summer. Yeah. Um, so we always say your summers are yours. 
Um, but we do have a lot of students um, working professionally over the summer. So about 50 that work professionally, how many are typically in your musical theater classes? About 26, but, but the classes are, they're split. So the, the students, 12 is sort of the average. There might be a little less, maybe one more. Um, but 12 is around uh, how many are in a class. Uh, but there are a couple of classes where I keep them together. So ensemble singing, they stay together because it's just better for the singing. Yeah. Um, and we have something junior called Junior Lab where all the juniors do a show together. And so we keep them together for that as well. But okay. everything else, they're pretty much broken up into different groups. So then one of the other big parent questions is, is money. So I saw that you do offer art scholarships. We do. Um, is it, do incoming freshmen typically get those, or are you a program that typically doesn't give that money until they've been there for a year? No, I think usually your uh, benefit package with scholarship, ac academic, um, all is sort of with you that first year and then guaranteed three okay. or four years. Cool. And then yeah. I, the apprenticeship program, can you explain what the, the apprenticeship is a little bit more? Yeah, the apprenticeship is, is more like a... a a working scholarship. Um, we only give a few of them, yeah. but that way the students can work. I have several that work for me as my assistants. Um, they're in the box office. They work in, in the COPA office. Yeah. Um, and so they can make some money while they're working and we yeah, work yeah. around their hours. And yeah. It seems to work out really well. Yeah. And that's a needs-based program? No, that's, that's scholarship-based. Oh, it's just scholarship-based. Um, Mm -hmm. So Point Park does have an amazing dance program, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think there's, from the students that I've talked to anyway, that there's an assumption that if they're not a phenomenal dancer, they're not getting into your musical theater program. Is that is there yeah. merit to that? Rumor, rumor. rumor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, as I said before, just because we're training them equally in all areas doesn't mean that all of them have to be dancers. Yeah. So... Um, the singing, the acting um, probably has much more weight, but okay. obviously if you're a phenomenal dancer, that's going to help, yeah. but it's not necessary. So I would say in a class of 26, we might have seven excellent dancers, and then everyone else at different levels. Yeah. Um, we've had cases, though, where people have come in not as dancers and have left as dancers. One is a choreographer for uh, Disney Cruise Lines now. Um, the other that I'm thinking of um, ended up dancing in uh, three Broadway shows already. So yeah, um, yeah. So it's it's really again to be the best that you can be. And some people haven't been dancing since they were five years old. Or right. so um, yeah. So that's that. You do not have to be a, a phenomenal dancer. But I just think with with anything, um, everything you do is part of who you are, yeah. and it helps. Let's segue into the, the audition process a little bit more now. So point okay. pre-screens. So just from, a, just from a putting yourself on video for an audition standpoint, like what's mm -hmm. your advice? Well, I mean, this is our first year going to video audition. I, yeah. I was not keen on jumping into yeah. it. Um, but we just got to the point where we couldn't, we didn't have the slots to see mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everyone that wanted to audition. So I would say make sure it's your best work. Uh, yeah. Film it as many times as you have to so that we see you at your best. We do the sort of the common pre-screen, which I think is really helpful so yeah. that they can just do, you know, one set of things. Boy, it's really hard to say. I just, I just yeah. think you have to be the best that you can be, and um, be yourself, which is so difficult to tell anyone under the age of forty. I think, you know, I think they should pick songs that they love mm -hmm. to sing that make them happy, because I think that'll even come through in a self tape. Yeah. Um, and things that show their range, um, and to have a good time. I think. Uh, the biggest thing for me when I watch is if I hear a lot of pitch issues, that's that's a tough one for me to um, say yes to. I would say make sure that you're enjoying the songs, love the songs, they make you happy when you sing them, and uh, musicality is good, you know, so we listen for rhythm and pitch, um, but also an overall sense of, of the student. I, I just think a lot of it is, is those three things. It's like showing you your energy and not being like oh my gosh please screen me in just to have a good time mm -hmm. making sure that you're singing your songs well and that your monologue is excellent i think uh 
for me, the wild card is... Uh, no, that was actually my next question was going to be just sort of for like, what are the best wild card videos that you see? Because it's so, I mean, for me, I think it's so hard to wrap your head around when you have like, do do this many songs and you want this this many bars or you want this with the common pre-screen mm -hmm. this amount of time and then this monologue and for this amount of time and it's so structured and then do this other video that you can do anything you want <laughs> so like what do yeah, we do <laughs> I, I mean i think and again you know it might be different i mean this conversation with, i've had with other programs and some of us yeah. just have different feelings about it but i feel like if you have a special skill Mm -hmm. um, if you're a gymnast, if you tap extremely well, um, if there's something you do that's special, that will be there of interest to me. But doing something um, that's very strange because someone might think it's bold can sometimes be risky. Um, I think just, and I think uh, we've had people play instruments. Um, I don't mind if they talk a little bit. We get to know, you know, get to know like what what they like to do. Yeah, because that's what it used to be. I mean, I know that you're you haven't pre-screened before, but it used to be like if you were gonna send the extra second sixty second video, it was more of just tell us about yourself or why you want to come here. It was yeah sort of the structure I, for that yeah, extra video. I think why you want to come here probably is hard because they have to do it for yeah all the the schools and like for instance we got. A, a tape this year that that's what they did, but they put the wrong school, so they kept saying how they wanted to go to this other school. Oops. You know, so I just I don't think there should be a lot of pressure on the wild yeah. card. I just think it should be an opportunity for us to get them, like you said, not to see them to see them in a not structured way. Yeah. So then, when picking audition material, you said earlier, just pick songs that you love because that comes, whether it's a video audition or an in-person audition, if you right. love your material, that's going to show. So is, is that number one for you is just seeing material that people love or how do you suggest finding material for someone who doesn't have a person to help them find it for them? Uh, I mean, I think they should listen to musicals, yeah. you know, and um, there is a requirement of a pre 1970s, I think, and then mm -hmm. a more contemporary. Oh, this, is sort of another thing that would be great for them to do for the wild card is pop rock. That's a great, that would be a great thing to yeah, show. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't mind hearing the same songs over and over if they're done well. Um, yeah. So I don't think they have to be super inventive or find something that is like no one's ever heard of before. I just think uh, yeah. they just have to listen to songs and see, you know, pick things that show some range. Um, so patter songs don't always like, you know, don't always, aren't very helpful. I think uh, people have to be a little bit careful of belting and having no dynamics because on this side, it just feels like they're screaming. So I think that, you know, uh, they don't have to belt their entire way through something. Yeah. It's not about being loud necessarily. So I, I don't think, you know, for, for a young person coming from high school, I don't think that there's a huge... Um, they shouldn't weigh so heavy on them with what they pick. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's important to have decent cuts. So it would be better not to, you know, do your cut and stop in the middle of the phrase. Or, um, you know, maybe do the best part of the song. They're not supposed to be phenomenal at picking rep mm -hmm. when they're 17. That's part of what we teach them here. What they pick is not going to have any um, weight on whether... I would pre-screen them even now. What about for monologues? I think monologues have, have to be uh, from plays. Um, and I just, I think that there seems to be, um, I see a lot of like sort of sitcom-y monologues or even monologues from great plays that are done sort of in a sitcom way. And that's not what I'm looking for, or okay. what we're looking for here. We want to hear you talk and want something yeah. and try to get what you want. and you know, just connect to the text. We're looking for good acting. And so I think I wouldn't do dialects. I wouldn't do like a character or caricature. Um, I wouldn't pick something like witty, funny. You know, you pick something well written by a good playwright. To me, is I think will show a young person off the best. So someone's finally gotten to the live audition. They've, they've passed their pre screen, they've made it through. Um, what is your in-person audition process going to look like? What's their audition day going to look like? And how is that different? This I should have broken this into two questions. From Unifieds versus doing an in, 
on yeah, campus. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question because they're a little bit different. Yeah. So um, if you audition on campus, um, you will meet, uh, there's like a, 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 a greet and meet um, with the parents or families or whoever you come with. Um, and uh, I think the dean is there and the head of recruitment and they do like a little hello. Um, and then the musical theater students will be brought over to us and we do a Q&A with just the students that are auditioning. We talk about the day, what to expect, yeah. um, see if they have questions. Um, and then they take a diagnostic uh, theory test just to get an idea um, of where they are, which has no bearing on whether they get into the program or not because they do not do it at Unify. They will sing or do a monologue. We have two rooms going. Um, and then uh, I have students teach the combination, and then I go in and I watch. So they'll, that's pretty much how the day goes. Gotcha. Um, whereas Unify, it's sort of the same thing, except that there's just the one room, and it's usually just me. Mm -hmm. um, they'll come in and do the songs and the monologue. And I should say that in the live audition, we often ask for additional material. So they should definitely have backups. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and if they are people that feel more comfortable belting, we're going to always ask for something legit. So that's something, or vice versa, you know. Yeah. So whatever they have, we're going to want to learn more about them. Yeah. Um, so Unifies, they'll come in, they'll do their, their songs and uh, monologue, and then they come, they sign up for a dance time. Also, we just do the Q&A after the dance call. Um so and it's, uh, we have the same combination throughout uh, all the Unifies and on campus. So um, they're, they're relatively the same, just the order's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. On campus, they'll get to meet students. Um, yeah. and usually the alums, alums teach the combination on the road. So, I mean, they're getting some exposure to, you know, people that either have went to the school or if they come on campus, go to the school. Yeah. So, and, and obviously we think that they will do their best if they're comfortable. So... It's our goal for them to kind of breathe in yeah. the room and to um, feel comfortable doing the work. Yeah, that's, and I think this is so hard for young people to learn is that you're not out to judge them. Like every person that walks in the room is the next best person for your program, right? or potentially the next best right. person. That you want right. them to succeed, that they don't, that's, right. that they are, you said this at the very beginning that. It is just as much you auditioning them as it is them auditioning you if they're if right. you're going to be a good fit for them, and it's so hard for a 17, 18 year old person to walk into a room and understand that there is this mutual dynamic that's happening and that you know the bundle mm -hmm. of nerves it doesn't necessarily need to be there because it's you know you want them to succeed as much as they want to do a good job. Exactly. And, and I think that that's really important. I mean, how they walk in the room, how they talk to you, you know, is, is a huge tipping point for me in an audition and who we're going to make an offer to. Um, if I feel like I can get to know them just a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you're going to spend four years with this person. You want to know that it's going right. to be a successful Working relationship, educational relationship, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that sort of took my last, my last question was going to be sort of like, what's the number one thing you look for in a candidate? I don't know if that answered it, though. Um, I think that's a big part of it, because I think yeah. there's a lot of, I mean, it's a numbers game. It's shocking to me, the numbers. Um, and that's why incredibly talented students sometimes don't get offers at a school. Yeah. Um, or they'll audition for 20 and get one offer. Um, because it, there's just so many. Yes. Um, so we see lots of talent. Um, so obviously that is important that they do, you know, that they do well, they don't have to be perfect. Um, but like I said, I think the tipping point for me is getting to know them a little bit. Yeah. Letting your personality um, shine. Yeah. And, and, uh, I think that that's, important but i think that's also a lot of pressure in a way um and that's why i think if you pick things that you love doing and that you enjoy doing that'll come through naturally yeah makes it a little easier yeah well uh, thank you so much for taking this time yeah of course it's my pleasure i hope it was helpful so i can only imagine how helpful this will be to a student just oh, good. Sort of starting out yeah. so yeah this is really great
Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. So long. Bye. All right, guys, I want to say thanks so much again to Ziva for giving her time to sit down and talk with us today. Let me know what you learned about Point Park's musical theater program and if you're planning on auditioning there. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel because we have so many more of these types of videos coming your way uh, that you won't want to miss if you are interested in auditioning for BFA musical theater programs in the future.